So I'm Chirdeep. Um, I work for Sobeys. I'm their advisor, and uh, I do uh, strategy for them. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about Newsmix. But initially, I'm just going to start off with what is beyond print? So it's newspapers. Where, are, where, are, where exactly are they going? Now, the problem that we had with paper initially was lack of a sustainable business model. There was some expectation of content being free. Uh, you had advertising, you had classifieds, uh, and you had subscriptions. Well, they kept them afloat. Things started moving. You had .com coming in. Now, .com failed to monetize. Uh, the problem was poor usability. You do not spend a lot of time uh, reading large articles on your laptops, on your desktops. Uh, you have the design is not very um, conducive. But what it also did was you had all these people from California flying over to New York and, and telling all these publishers, put your stuff free and we are going to give you a lot of advertising money. Well, classifieds fell off the cliff. Advertising fell off the cliff. And subscriptions fell off the cliff. And then you had this new devices coming in, and you had a very complex distribution of how people really consume content now. In the morning, you use your mobiles or your uh, tablets. In the afternoon, you're sitting at your desktop, you're using a browser. In the evening, you go back to your laptops, or you go back to your tablets or your mobile phones. People use more than one devices. Um, can I ask how many among you actually use more than one device on a daily basis? Well, that's about 90% of you. That says it all, right? Um, now, once you start using more than one device, you actually start expecting a more uniform experience. But we also have this problem whereby there is this whole aspect of RSS feeds. What are they? Who uses it? I mean, how many people on the street really get it? Uh, and email, I mean, you read something, it's interesting, you send it to somebody, does that really do it? I mean, I still dream of the day I'm going to have zero inbox. I get about 100 emails a day. It's just crazy. So here are the three problems you're actually seeing with the publishing industry. So business model, usability, and distribution. So how exactly are we going to make money? How are we going to make sure that people find a uniform experience across all the devices, all the platforms that you use? And how am I going to distribute that? It's, 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 it's a huge nightmare there. Now, hope or is it hype? Steve Jobs brought it to us. But this is what we did to it. We created walled gardens. Just bringing um, a newspaper or a, or a magazine onto uh, an iPad does not really solve your usability and your, um, you know, complex distribution mechanisms that people have of, of multiple platforms, devices, and so on. So is it a reading experience that people are giving, or, th or these, these publishers are giving? I mean, name any, they're all there. Um, uh, or, or is it really just content that's being thrown about? So the publishing industry needs to re kind of question itself, what is it about? Is it about content, or is it about giving reading experience? Now, let us try and understand what is it that readers actually demand. Now, the reality is you are all, we are all newspapers. You publish, you tweet, you put stuff on Facebook, you uh, curate, you like something, you send it to your friends, and you consume. You are all newspapers today. Who is it who's actually really giving you the tools and the power to spread your word. Now, you create content. But there you are. You actually, you are all publishers. But in reality, not all of you are editors. You don't sit and actually, if you take any picture which you actually put out on either Facebook or Twitter, you do not sit and kind of clean it up for anybody. You're not editors. So we actually want curators. Some among us are curators. We like some amount of information being fed to us. We like following specific people because they are masters of their subjects. So we like curation. But we also like relevance. We want to make sure that any information that is being thrown to us 
has some meaning to what I am all about. So if I do investments, I work with technology startups, I, uh, I like only cricket. I don't want to see football, for heaven's sake. Not me, right? And we like to explore and discover. Now, here's a statement that I would make, which I think a lot of people will not like me for. Search for uh, news is dead. You heard it here first. All people want is to explore and discover. And you, you see that even in, let us say, the music. You look at Spotify. You don't sit and go and search stuff. You actually go and explore. You try and discover new stuff by looking at, at what else is out there. And you have to be, you, people need to enable that. And that is, that is where it's, it's all about getting on a boat and just going. Who is giving you those tools today? And you want it to be beautiful. You want it really to be, your dog should love it. That's what it is. And this is the complex behavior that we're having today. I do that. But I also sit behind a car and honk when I see that. But that's the reality of today. And like I said, we have a very complex distribution. There are different platforms. There are different devices. And we want to make sure we have a uniform experience going through that. And we, need, we want control. We don't want um, just a one-way communication, but we want to decide at what point in time we like what, and when we want to stop receiving that. And we, we like things to evolve. There is an element whereby we do not want everything to shift entirely onto digital space, and we don't want things suddenly to move from there on to, let us say, only on our mobiles. Now, evolving is, is a very interesting aspect. So um, in India, you see print increasing by about 15% a year. And I think that's going to continue. It's, it's, it's one kind of a place where I think it's, it's also going to happen in, in Africa, where infrastructure is a problem. Uh, so if, even if people have their uh, e-book readers, they have iPads, there's no electricity. So I do need my, my dead wood. And again, it's all about experience. You want uniform experience, and that, that is what Newsmix has really done. So Newsmix is basically a platform that gives you uniform experience. It's, it's actually a, a newsstand, a next generation digital newsstand that works across the board, on your browser, on your tablet, on your mobile, and gives you a uniform experience. You are in control, and you are at the center of it. Now, let's look at, now that is about the, the user behavior aspect of it. Now, that, looking at that, we also started looking at what exactly does a product really evolve into. Anybody who starts a company building a product should always know what industry they are in and what stage their industry really is in. Every industry starts off with a certain technology or functionality coming out. And you see a lot of those there. You have the tape, you have the phone, you have the calculator, you have the alarm clock. These were all separate things. These are all functionalities. These are all technologies that first came about. Does anybody know who's this guy in the center? He's the gadget man. He's one of my favorite characters uh, from 1930s. So the gadget man used to carry everything. You can see the laser beams up there. You know, he's carrying all kinds of tools. And his master is that frog up there who's smoking a cigar. Uh, an awesome character. Now, to me, that is what Nokia became. They had everything. They, got, they were the first company to have a GPS, the first company to have, I don't know, an SD card, first company to expand your memory. You just name it, they actually were the first company to have that. You ought to move from there to how do you build a platform from there on. And anybody who's actually starting a company who's building a product needs to know where they are. Is it a new technology? Is it a new functionality? Where does it go towards next? Do we converge? Do we bring different elements together? Once we bring different elements together, because user behavior changes as they start using some of those, they expect a few things coming together. And once you reach to convergence, 
you want to say, all right, how do I move to a platform? How do I hide the complexity under it? You don't want to ask me to start using my GPS. You want to build something on top of it, something like Foursquare on top of it to say, all right, now, I don't want to care. I don't want to know there's a GPS under it. I just want to know I am here, and I want to tell that to people. How do I overlay a map on top of it? Initially, you had Google Maps. How do I bring that onto a platform? So that is how one has to look at their industry as they move forward. And that's something which we actually asked ourselves. Um, and this is another example where we are actually saying, OK, you, you look at the gaming industry, you look at computers, cinema, telephones, and interfaces. Now, when you talk about convergence, you actually do pick aspects from different other industries to bring together to create new platforms. And these new platforms are the ones which create new ecosystems. And we can see that all these being in different areas are actually converging towards something else now. Every convergence leads to a platform. And the same thing we see even in software. So Web1 was all about, so browser became a platform. And then you started publishing into it. You had HTML, you, know, you started putting text, you started putting, putting graphics. Then you had Web2 coming in, where it's not just a single, you know, just, just me throwing information at you, but it's about, it's about more sharing, it's more about uh, you know, two-way communication. Where you started having blogs, you started having podcasts, you started having uh, videos, you start having social networks. Now, that came about by quite a few con um, technologies converging together. And now we are moving towards Web 3.0, which is more about where you're, you're now looking at HTML5 coming in. You're going to have real time. You're going to have uh, 3D portals. You're going to have, um, well, um, you're, going, you're going to have a lot of things into virtual world and how that kind of relates to um, uh, the real world and so on. So, so it's, it's, it's going to be a fantastic play that's going to happen. But between each of these, there's a lot of convergence of different technologies that comes together. And Web 6 is going to happen in 2021. So those of you who are thinking of new technologies to bring in, there's a lot of convergence that's going to happen right from now on for the next 10 years. You know, Flash is, is disappearing now because that was one of those other things that actually converge together for you to build new things. So it's, 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 a, it's, an, it's an amazing aspect of, of such movement that's happening. So what, does new, what do new platforms really do? Well, to me, they actually really rock and roll. Um, does anybody, has anybody heard of uh, Key Chest here? Oh, fantastic, one person. OK, so um, Disney has this thing whereby you have, you need to buy just an access to a certain program, a movie, and so on. And it doesn't matter what device you're using. Well, there are a lot of DRM questions, but that's something for you know, another talk. But once you have a key to that, you, it doesn't matter what format it is, so they're trying to make it format less. It doesn't matter how you access it. You use any kind of browser, any kind of device, any kind of OS, any kind of platform, and it's, all about, it, it's not about owning. It's about having access to it. That's all. So any new platform, it disrupts the distribution channel. You've seen that in music. You've seen that in, in movies. Will that happen in, in books, as my friend was talking about there, or newspapers? Well, we are yet to see. It helps you go global. So it, it uh, disrupts the existing business models. And it helps disrupt the whole value chain. You saw that with CDs and, and DVDs and so on. And then if everything moves online and digital, you know, the whole value chain is broken. You have new opportunities, new businesses being created. Plus, what you have is new ecosystems. And um, before I forget, there's also this whole aspect of where you have um, Facebook trying to create an HTML5 platform, whereby they want to disrupt the entire app store that, that Apple is creating. So you can actually have apps put into the HTML5 platform in Facebook and access and, and give access to your customers no matter on what device they are. Now, that's a brilliant dis disruption that's going to happen. So I'm just going to very quickly go through Newsmix. So as I said, it is your personalized newsstand. You are at the center of it. You are the publisher, you are the curator, and you are the consumer. 
And we have that on the iPad, and we have it on uh, the browser. And there's a, there's a whole lot of sync that happens between the two. The experience actually remains the same. And we take care of all the user behavior that I spoke to you before. So we had to understand all of that before we actually came to this. So we, want, we understand that we are more of a, we are at a stage where convergence is happening. But we, we don't want to just have news and social put together and that's done. That's not the way um, I think this industry is going to kind of just continue. Uh, we don't think we are, we are yet towards a platform, but we need to have that as a goal somewhere. We do not know where it will go from there on. But that's where it is. We, have, we are social, we are personal, we are customizable, and we bring in rich content. So if you look at, look at that, Jamie Oliver's um, uh, Twitter feed, we convert that into something that looks much more reasonable, much more beautiful. And we make sure that, and what we have is cross-platform, which is an HTML5. And like I said, we are mobile. Thank you. Yeah.